This is a, a classic work and energy problem for a crate being dragged across the floor. I just I want to make sure everything in the paragraph ends up in the picture. So 12 kilograms dragged for two and a half meters. So that would be all the way from here to here. I'll just call this x equals zero. And this will be x equals 2.5. Okay, by a rope with a tension of 150 newtons, kinetic friction coefficient 0 0.2. So that all looks good. So first I want the work done by the tension. And so if I call this tension force T vector, I would have to get a dot product between the tension and the displacement vector. And just to be very clear about what the displacement vector is, it's this thing that points to the right from the initial position to the final position. All right, and that would be uh, T delta X cosine theta. But again, it's often more convenient to just look at this work calculation as a T cosine theta. In other words, the parallel component of T. Multiplying the entire displacement. And that really gets the concept across, too, that it's only the parallel component of the force that's actually pumping energy into the object. So 150 cosine 28 degrees times 2.5 meters. The 150 was newtons, so I'm going to get newton meters or joules when I'm done. 150 cosine 28 times 2.5 gives me 331 joules. All right, then I want the work done by the friction force. Well, I don't even have a picture of the friction force yet, so I'm going to get that real quick. So FK is going to be mu K times the normal force, but I don't have the normal force either, so I better put that in. And I'm not going to say N equals mg because I have another force tampering with the vertical direction. So I'm going to have to do a real vertical analysis here. All right, the force of gravity is mg. I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. 12 times 9.8, 117.6 newtons. So don't jump to conclusions too quickly here. The normal force is not equal to that. And it's because there's a vertical component of the tension force. And that guy is going to be a T sine theta or 150 sine 28. And I'll get an approximation on that. 150 sine 28, 70.4 newtons. So when I do my Y analysis, I, I don't have any acceleration in the Y direction. So I know that the forces have to balance. So the normal force added to this upward force of the upward component of the tension has to balance gravity pointing down. So I have normal force, let me back up a second, plus the T sine theta is equal to mg. And I've calculated all these things up here to make it faster. So normal force is mg, that's 117.6 minus T sine theta, which was 70.4. Yeah. And I get 47.2 newtons for that. And it makes sense that the normal force is, le is less than mg because I'm helping to pull this thing up. The normal force doesn't have to push up as hard to keep the block at a constant height. So there's that piece. Then the friction force, Fk, is equal to mu k times n, which is 0 0.2 times 47.2. That's 9.44 newtons. Another important result along the way. And then I want the work done by this force. So it's pointing opposite to the direction of motion, opposite to the displacement vector. So again, the cosine of 180 is just negative 1, so it's just going to put a minus sign on my answer. So the work done by kinetic friction is going to be negative 
and the magnitude of the friction force, magnitude of the displacement. And I get to find out how much energy the friction force deleted from the system as the block was sliding along. And it's 23.6 joules. And the classic final question, get the final speed of the block. So the net work is going to give me a change in kinetic energy. Uh, we're assuming this thing starts from rest because that's what I usually mean if I forget to say it. And then my net work is going to be 331 joules minus 23.6 joules. Friction made things come out a little slower than they would have otherwise. Equals 1 half times 12 kilograms times V final squared. And again, I'm kind of in a jam on space, so I'm going to do all this at once in my calculator. 331 minus 23.6. Take that result and multiply it by 2. That gets rid of the 1 half. Take that and divide by 12. That isolates VF squared. Raise that to the... I like to raise to the 1 half power, or you could square root it. And I get VF, VF is equal to 7.16 meters per second.